Good day. My name is Dr. Briska Shema. I'll be presenting on nutrition and supplementation in pregnancy. My supervisor is Dr. Esther Swan. The outline of our presentation will be talking about the importance of nutrition, preconception assessment, dietary recommendation in pregnancy, micronutrient supplementation, um, indication for dietitian referral, and foods to avoid in pregnancy. Pregnancy is a period of intense fetal growth and development, as well as maternal physiological changes which require adequate nutrition. A healthy diet includes an adequate intake of protein, vitamins, minerals to meet maternal and fetal needs. Um, therefore, nutrition assessment should be a part of routine healthcare visits for women in their reproductive age. Women who have a better nutri nutritional status at the time they conceive are better able to meet the demands of pregnancy and have successful pregnancy outcomes. Both undernourishment and overnourishment may have negative consequences for pregnant women and their babies. Um, fetal under or overnutrition can lead to permanent changes. Um, of fetal metabolic pathways, which increases the risk of childhood and adult um, diseases. Therefore, it is important to evaluate, monitor, and make changes to improve maternal nutrition before and during pregnancy. Um, nutritional health and lifestyle before and during pregnancy influences clinically important pregnancy outcomes such as gestational hypertension, diabetes, preterm delivery, and fetal growth restriction. Nutritional factors in nutria um, can increase the risk of congenital anomalies, can affect the development of cognitive and social behavioral abilities, can also affect metabolic adaptations that affect the long-term risk of obesity and non-communicable diseases. In terms of preconception assessment, it's important to assess um, the patient's dietary composition, physical activity history, assess their height, weight, and BMI, assess for anemia as well, and assess for risk of specific nutritional problems. Um, such as folate, iron, calcium, vitamin B12, vitamin D, iodine, and zinc. Um, for pre preconception interventions, it is advised, it's important to advise the patient on the importance of a healthy diet and lifestyle, um, such as exercise. Weight loss counseling should be offered if the patient is found to be overweight. Risky behaviors and exposures such as tobacco, alcohol, recreational drugs, and environmental toxins should be assessed for and advised appropriately. Also, it's important to assess for chronic diseases um, and also optimize on their management prior to conception. Folic acid supplementation should be commenced as early as possible to prevent neural tube defects. Um, in terms of the dietary recommendations during pregnancy, the ratio of macronutrients in the diet do not need to change during pregnancy if pre-pregnancy nutrition is appropriate. Um, energy intake needs in the beginning of pregnancy does not increase from pre-pregnancy levels as well. WHO recommends um, increased energy intake based on calculated energy costs. In the first trimester, there is a recommendation of about 85 kilocalories per day, which is equivalent to about one slice of bread. Second trimester, 285 kilocalories per day. Third trimester, 475 kilocalories a day. Most pregnant women in the last two trimesters will require about 2,200 and 2,900 kilocalories per day. In terms of recommended weight gain, as advised by the WHO, 
for underweight women at the start of pregnancy with a BMR of less than 18.5, it is recommended to gain between 12.5 to 18 kg in pregnancy. Women with normal BMIs of eight, between 18.5 and 24.5 um, are advised to gain between 11.5 to 16 kg. For women who are overweight with BMIs of 25 to 29.9, 7 um, to 11.5 kg um, is acceptable. And for obese patients with BMIs of more than 30 kg, um, are advised between 5 and 9 kg weight gain in pregnancy. In terms of nutritional recommendations, as advised by FIGO, um, for protein, the daily intake requirement goes from 60 grams pre-pregnancy to 71 grams during pregnancy. And this is because the protein needs increase during pregnancy to account for increased tissue formation for the fetus, placenta, and maternal tissues. Um, food sources uh, include meat, poultry, fish, eggs, dairy, nuts, and seeds, amongst other foods. Carbohydrate, the pre-pregnancy daily intake requirement is 130 grams. It increases to 175 grams in pregnancy and 210 grams in lactating mother. Carbohydrate provides glucose for both mother and fetus during pregnancy and should continue to be the largest source of energy in the diet. Uh, you can get carbohydrates from food sources such as grains and starchy vegetables. Amongst other nutritional recommendations for folate, pre-pregnancy daily intake requirement is 400 micrograms. In pregnancy, it can go up to 600 micrograms. And this can be found in leafy vegetables, liver, legumes, and citrus foods. As we know, this helps um, prevent um, neurotube defects as well as anemia in pregnancy. Calcium is another important uh, element. Um, the pre-pregnancy daily intake is 1 gram to 1.3. It does not change during pregnancy or in lactation. Um, it can be found in kidney beans, dairy products, um, broccoli, cashew nuts, among other foods. Now let's look at over nutrition. Overnutrition has um, some effects on, on the mom as well as the fetus. Some of this um, risk associated with overnutrition include, for the mom, include hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. Uh, women that are also that have overnutrition or obesity also have a risk of GDM, they have the gestational diabetes mellitus, they are also at risk of an obstructed delivery, they have an increased risk of cesarean delivery or assisted delivery as well, and in the postpartum period, um, they are at risk of complications such as infection or blood clot. In terms of the fetal risk, there is a risk of macrosomia, congenital anomalies, high blood insulin and neonatal hypoglycemia, as well as preterm birth, stillbirth, or inference death, and development of childhood um, obesity and later non communicable diseases. For women who are undernourished or who have undernutrition, um, at the beginning of the pregnancy, they have a diminished energy reserve and may be deficient in important nutrients such as iron, iodine, vitamins, um, folate, calcium, and zinc. Um, this puts them at risk of a weakened immune system, um, which can lead to infections and other diseases. Exposure to undernutrition and neutral is associated with congenital anomalies, low birth weight, stunting in childhood, shorter adult height, low educational attainment and reduced economic um, productivity overall. Dietary supplementation is recommended therefore to reduce the risk of stillbirth and small progestational age babies. Low birth weight um, also 
um, resulting from undernutrition has been linked to an increased risk of obesity and non-communicable diseases in later life. Now, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about iron deficiency. Iron deficiency um, is found in about 35 to 60 percent of pregnant women in Africa, and um, rather 35 to 60 percent of pregnant women in Africa are found to be anemic. Um, 75 percent of those have iron deficiency anemia, and 25 percent have um, other deficiencies such as poor leg, um, vitamin B12, and hemoglobinopathies. Anemia in pregnancy can be physiologic or iron deficiency, as I mentioned. The major contributory factors to anemia um, include parasitic infections such as malaria, hookworm, and schizosomiasis in areas where this infection is an endemic, as well as chronic infections such as TB and HIV and arthritis. Hem hemoglobinopathy such as sickle cell also does contribute to the prevalence of anemia. WHO defines anemia as an HP of less than 11 grams per deciliter in pregnancy. In terms of diagnosing iron deficiency anemia, um, it is diagnosed as a ferritin level of less than or equal to 30 micrograms per liter plus a transparent saturation of less than 20%. Also, it is important to know that anemia is a late sign of iron deficiency. Therefore, um, it's important to also screen for, for iron deficiency early on pre -con in the preconception state and also early on in pregnancy. Um, the effects of iron deficiency on the mom include um, a higher morbidity and mortality from the risk of postpartum hemorrhage, also puts to the mom at a risk of um, increased risk of infection, um, decreased lactation, increased postnatal depression, fatigue, and forgetfulness. Um, childhood effects um, of iron deficiency anemia includes neurocognitive defects in children. Um, they are found to have slower perceptual speed, impaired language abilities. Um, they are also more passive and less engaged, and have been found to have poor mathematical understanding of concepts. So, um, it's important to prevent iron deficiency in pregnancy, and this can be done by. Um, doing a preconception ferritin level check and an HB check and optimizing those levels and optimizing the iron um, store pre in the preconception phase. Um, of note, the iron needed in pregnancy adds up to about 1,260 milligrams in average. It's also um, important to incorporate dietary intake of iron. Um, also, Take supplemental oral iron of 30 milligrams per day to 120 milligrams per day until iron deficiency um, anemia is corrected. Or also in all pregnant women, it is important to take about 30 milligrams to 120 milligrams a day of iron. If a patient is intolerant to oral iron, then 60 milligrams of elemental iron daily or an alternate days can be taken, which is about 325 milligrams of ferrous sulfate on alternate days. The challenges of oral iron is that um, it is best absorbed in a mildly acidic environment. Um, so ways to help improve the absorption is to add vitamin C or glass of orange juice 30 minutes before breakfast to help with the absorption. Um, it's also important to take the oral iron about two hours before or four hours after taking antacids. Ferrous sulfate um, should be taken on an empty stomach for improved absorption. 
Also, it's important to know that um, um, oral iron is ineffective in patients with gastrectomy and it may be inadequate for severe or ongoing blood loss. It requires administration for many months. On average, um, the HB increases by it takes 1.5 weeks to raise the HB by 1 gram by per deciliter. And it also has unpleasant side effects. And in cases of unpleasant side effects, um, you can change the iron to liquid iron or new uh, oral iron formulation or IV iron. So the indications for IV iron include intolerability to oral iron because of the side effects, poor response to oral iron, inadequate time to wait for effects of oral iron. For example, if a patient is in the third trimester, like we mentioned earlier, it takes about one and a half weeks to increase the, the HB level by one, one gram per deciliter. So if you're in the third trimester, there's not enough time to optimize the HB to a level, then you can consider IV iron. Also, um, patients who have an inability to absorb um, oral iron, such as patients with bariatric surgery, gastrectomy, inflammatory bowel diseases. It is also important to remember that um, IV iron is contraindicated in first trimester or in patients with iron overload, uh, or patients who are known to have allergy to IV iron. So IV um, iron dextrin um, is an example of an IV iron that we use um, for patients who um, weigh between 50 and 70 kg and 70 kg above. The dosing is shown below. If the HP is greater or equal to 10, you can give um, up to 1,000 milligrams of um, iron dextran um, if the weight is 50 to 70 kg and it can go up to 1500 milligrams in more than 70 kg women if hb is less than 10 then you can give 1500 milligrams iv iron uh, for a weight of 50 to 70 kg and then 2000 milligrams for weight of 70 kg a maximum um, infusion should be at 20 milligrams per kg per infusion using the pre-pregnancy weight. The goals of iron supplementation is to optimize HB to 13 grams per deciliter and also to optimize the iron stores, meaning a ferritin level of more than um, 100 and a transparent saturation of more than 20%. So we're just going to talk a bit more on WHO supplementation recommendations of other um, of other micronutrients. Um, for calcium supplements, um, it is recommended in populations with low dietary calcium intake, and it's recommended to take about 1.5 to 2 grams oral elemental calcium. This helps reduces the risk of preeclampsia. Vitamin A supplements are only recommended in areas with severe vitamin A deficiency to prevent um, night blindness. Folic acid, we've mentioned um, before, um, it's recommended to take about 400 micrograms daily to prevent um, fetal neurotube defect, maternal anemia, puerperal sepsis, low birth weight, and preterm birth. Or the alternative is to take 2,800 micrograms of folic acid weekly. So, um, when do we refer to a dietitian in pregnancy? According to the Integrated Nutrition Program um, of the Western Cape, we should refer pregnant women with insufficient growth according to curve on synthesis bundles graph. Um, to the dietitian, 
We should also refer a woman with a mid upper arm circumference of less than 23 centimeters or BMI of less than 18.5 kg per meter square to the dietitian for supplementation. Other indications for dietitian referral include um, patients with diabetes, um, patients with an obstetric history of a previous anti neurotube defect, obstetric history of gestational diabetes, hypermesis gravidarum, hypertensive disorders, and um, current multifetal pregnancies as well. Also, um, Patients with GI diseases that causes malabsorption, such as Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and cystic fibrosis. Also, patients with surgical issue of a bariatric surgery or bowel resection. Nutritional issues such as obesity, eating disorders, and patients who are overweight. As well as patients um, who with substance use, such as cigarettes, alcohol, stimulants, and recreational drugs. Um, in terms of foods to avoid during pregnancy, um, it's important to avoid taking excessive liver in excess amount because it can result in teratogenicity. So it's advised to limit consumption, particularly in early pregnancy. Also avoid fish with mercury. Um, it can lead to fetal brain damage or developmental delay. Also avoid unwashed fruits and vegetables. Um, there's a risk of toxoplasmosis, so it's advised to peel or wash thoroughly before eating. From the cooked or raw meat, poultry or seafood um, puts a pregnant woman at risk of toxoplasmosis infection as well as salmonella. It is advised to um, cook food very well. Um, avoid a cold deli meat or cold smoked seafood. Um, this puts pregnant women at risk of um, getting listeriosis. Um, it's advised to reheat um, food until steaming hot. Um, listeriosis, we know, um, can put women at risk of recurrent miscarriages, spontaneous abortion, fetal dismiss, preterm birth as well. Um, it's also important to avoid raw egg um, because there's a risk of salmonella infection. Um, avoid taking that in pregnancy. Avoid taking soft cheese such as feta, brie, made from unpasteurized milk because there's a risk of a listeriosis infection as well. It's important to also restrict caffeine intake in pregnancy because there's a risk of pregnancy loss and low birth weight. And the advice is to not have more than 300 milligrams per day of caffeine and um, to reduce or avoid it completely in pregnancy. In conclusion, um, abnormal nutritional status affects pregnancy and children in the long term. Nutritional assessment should be a part of preconception counseling and iron deficiency is an important cause of anemia in pregnancy and is easily corrected. Um, it's important to also refer patients to dietitians for, opt for nutritional optimization. Thank you.